second grade. Okay. And here we go. I didn't see any technology being used in, no. in the classroom. No. You want to confer? Do we conferring all together or for um, non-negotiables? I had setting objectives, providing feedback, and providing recognition. That's Correct. what I had. Okay. And then for um, instruction, instructional strategies with uh, cues and questions. I I jumped to uh, context for that one. Okay, at small group. At small group. Yeah. Technology used by student and teacher non. Mm -mm. Type of knowledge? Type of the application. Because of um, what was happening in the centers. You put what? Application. Oh, apply? Yeah. 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 And then um, student writing and drawing. I noticed when I was in a classroom the following non negotiable items that were listed. I noticed that the teachers did, in fact, provide feedback to their students, and I did notice the teachers reinforcing effort on the part of the students that were working in the groups. I think so too. More children on computers this time. Mm -hmm. But why do you think the teacher's having you to write? Why does she think it's important for you to write every day? It's so you learn. Oh. You learn a lot. I asked the children who were writing in a small group uh, they they knew that they were supposed to be writing. They knew that they wrote on one paper at a mm -hmm. time. But as far as why they were actually doing it, um, it was just general answers. They right. weren't sure why they were doing that particular task. Yeah, some of the students were unable to articulate the learning goal for the lesson. Although I did notice on the board that there were some recorded objectives, the students were unable to really grasp what the um, learning goal was for the lesson. Um, seemed to be a little fragmented. I noticed that um, some students were working on a picture. Um, one little girl was supposed to be listening to a story on tape but didn't have their phones on. So in terms of the goal that was placed on the board, the objective, it wasn't something that was consistent across the board within all the learning groups. And what did you have for instructional strategies, pedagogy? I had practice because okay. it seemed that all the students had uh, were familiar with the tasks mm -hmm. that they were performing. It didn't seem new to them, so that's why I chose that that criteria. Okay. I also had um, practice because the students were working in learning groups. Um, I noticed that most of the students were successful. It appeared that they were probably reinforcing some skills that were taught to them previously. I noticed in the groups that a lot of students didn't really need to have the support from the classroom teachers, so it appeared that they were um, familiar with the tasks at hand. And under context, I had small group and um, paired. The information contained in, in this um, iPod reflects that 
there's technology that's used for the teacher and there's also technology that's used by the student. So I did notice one student working on the computer and it was a learning game. Okay. Uh, under type of knowledge, I had a high application. Uh -huh. That's what I had too. Again, great, great. because we, um, they all seem to again have had experience with the tasks that they were uh, performing, and that they were applying knowledge that they already had mm -hmm. to that particular task. Exactly, and I just want to affirm what what you're saying because those are the same things that I noticed. And under evidence of mine, I had performance tasks. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, because uh, in each of the settings, it would be very easy to go up and see whether or not the child was um, successful right. at that particular task. Mm -hmm. The children working with the teacher uh, and the aides, again, it was very easy. Were they able to respond to what was expected of them and, and they were? Okay, I also had under that one that it was performance task, but I also had another one as well student writing, drawing, because I did notice a group of mm -hmm. students that were recording information in their journals. I guess they had basically read some story um, that they had to respond to. So the students were, you know, recording information in their journals. Plus, I also noticed them writing, um, well, I saw them drawing um, some pictures. Okay, and I also um, noticed that there were some teacher-directed questions that were occurring in a small group. The teacher basically asked specific questions pertaining to the story that the students had read in the back of the classroom. So click the down here on the left, and then upload new walkthroughs. And it'll say upload complete. Did anyone notice any overarching themes today? We noticed in the classrooms that we visited um, was the fact that it was very difficult to detect what the objectives were. In some classes, the objectives were recorded on the board. Um, in one class, we noticed the objective, but there was a lot of stuff on the board, so it made it kind of difficult to be able to see exactly what it was. And then in another class, the person had the objectives listed for the week. So when it's time to interview students and get them to tell us what the learning goals are, it was very difficult for them to articulate the learning goals. Did anyone else notice that during their observations today? When we did the observe, the, especially the upper grades, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, math, science, and language art, their objectives were very clear and students could actually relate to them. But in one of the classes, a third grade class, they had objectives, just like you said, by the week. Mm -hmm. We actually had to stop and ask the teacher where the, because the word, even the word objective wasn't even listed. Mm -hmm. It had all these things written all Activities. over. And I couldn't tell what they were, standards and this and this and this, but when we asked you guys there were the objectives for the week, so it was kind of hard to determine which objective was for that lesson and therefore could the student articulate that. Okay. One of the things that I noticed that was positive, there was a lot of small group instruction occurring in all the classrooms, right? So that was something that was definitely positive. We saw some students working independently. Um, however, for the most part, the students were working in small groups. I also want to comment on the groups in, especially in the lower grade levels, in every classroom that we went in we saw them using technology and it wasn't the first time that the students, because the students would actually say, oh we're having a spelling test, we're doing this, um, and they weren't all using the same program from grade level to grade level and they were used to the computers, they were using the headphones, so it looks like there was something that they were used to that they've used many times over. Um, I also want to comment about the groups and sometimes in groups Students are grouped, but they're doing the same activity mm -hmm. just because they were grouped. In most of the classrooms that we found, I, th I think all of them, we actually saw that it was a different activity mm -hmm. for every group with a different objective, and then the students rotate it. And that was in the lower grades, plus also in the middle school grades. Mm -hmm. yeah, we found that as well when we went through. We saw a student would be next, sitting next to another student, but they would be doing a different assignment. Or a student would be sitting next to another student, and they would be doing the same assignment. It differed. Um, throughout the class. So there may be three different assignments and six kids working on them and they all had different things. We also found that some kids were on the computers, some kids were on the f sitting on the floor listening to uh, headphones mm -hmm. and listening to a story mm -hmm. and taking notes. A teacher would be sitting with another small group, but we found small groups in every classroom. We found technology used in every classroom and we too found uh, that there were three teachers in some of the mm -hmm. second grade classes yeah. that we went through. And with the um, student interview, the only um, comment that I have about that is that the students really weren't able to ar clearly articulate the goals. They knew that they were playing at the computer and they know what they were playing with as you know, the language that they used. But they weren't able to tell why they were doing uh, what they were doing. They weren't able to tell 
why they were reading a particular story or what genre as you continue to probe. So, well, what was your take on the student work? I noticed most of it was in the hallway and not in the classroom. What did you guys feel? How did you guys feel? I noticed about that? they. I noticed student work in both settings. Oh, okay. On the outside of the classroom, and it was inclusive um, on the walls and in the classrooms that we visited. Did you notice anything different? Pat, Pat was the person. No, I agree. They were. There were. Um, there were examples in both the classrooms and on the walls in the hallway in the classrooms that we visited. One of the things that I noticed in one of the um, bilingual classrooms was what a wonderful effort the students put forth even though they weren't proficient in English yet. It was very obvious what they were communicating. It may not have been grammatically correct or the spelling wasn't perfect, but they had certainly given forth a good effort and the teacher had valued it. The one thing there, the math in the middle school was a little weak, saying they were more consistent as the same kind of comment for every mm -hmm. single paper. But when we went through the language arts and the science, they were specific to each student. Oh, and they were very, very detailed mm -hmm. um, in their feedback. There's been two focus areas that we've had. One is the middle school more focused on differentiated groupings. Uh, they were very... Um, used to kids being in groups of four or five and everybody doing the same thing. So the differentiation has come a long way in the middle school groupings. But all of the grade levels, teachers getting used to being able to put comments on papers and then display them. Because when we went to school, mm -hmm. that was a no-no. Right. You never displayed any kind of comment that may be interpreted as negative. Mm -hmm on a paper. So that's been something that's been mm -hmm. slow in coming, but they're getting better at it. And we've compromised a lot with making sure things are on the backs of papers, mm -hmm. still being displayed. The students know what's going on, but it's not easily visible to maybe visitors that are in the mm -hmm. classrooms or in the hallways. Um, but they've come a long way with that. But that was slow coming. Really obvious that the <coughs> teachers had differentiated, uh, especially at kindergarten, first grade level, and one of the, the bilingual classes. Um, it, the, the children, they, they obviously used, it, used some kind of assessment mm -hmm. and as a result of the, the assessment that's what's driving the instruction and that's exactly what we want to say. I just want to say that students were very successful um, working in the group settings. Not only that, but the students who were working independently, they really didn't need any support from the teachers and they were being um, very successful with the performance tasks that were in front of them. You know, sometimes you find classes where students are working in groups and they're constantly getting up and going over to the teacher and needing some, you know, support. But I didn't find that in any of the classrooms today. But what about reinforcing effort and providing recognition? In the, one of the classes, it was clearly we provided recognition, setting objectives and reinforcing effort. Clearly setting objectives and reinforcing effort were probably the areas that had the least, um, we saw the least amount of. Yeah, the setting objectives I've had, I had the least amount of checklists. Mm -hmm. Now, when we worked with the when we went through the upper grades, the middle school grades, four out of f four out of four all had objectives. That's great. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. I also want to comment, going back to Dr. Jones about the groups and the students, that they didn't they needed very little assistance. They also were not distracted by other groups. Mm -hmm. Some That's had good. headphones on. Some were reading. Right. Some were writing. I mean, I was more distracted than. Than they were it's, like it would be really hard, yeah. but They're for them, really especially so. in the lower grades, they just concentrated on their group, mm -hmm. and then when they were moved to the next one, they just re refocused again on their new task yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. So it took a lot to me for the little ones. It took a lot of effort, but they were not distracted. Versus I've seen before in the past, I'm fight. I want to go on the computer now. Mm -hmm. I want to do this. Um, what about the classrooms in terms of technology because we notice a lot of students using technology however teachers weren't using the technology so that's something that was consistent yeah, across the um, we only found one classroom where the teacher was using technology and that was a science class okay she was using an elmo okay what about the type of knowledge that was occurring um you know we talked about remember understand apply analyze evaluate create um, for the most part, what did you observe? I know Pat and I, I think we had we apply were, most of the time. We went into we the were, classroom. We between understanding and, understand and, and apply. apply. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah. evidence of learning. We saw some journals. Okay. But we saw a lot of worksheets. I'm not sure how you, your classes went, but yeah, we, saw a lot we, of we had a lot of, um, for the, um, what is this? 
evidence of learning, we had um, a lot of worksheets or student mm -hmm. writing mm -hmm. uh, as our uh, response for them. Well, the worksheets that we saw was in the science, however, those worksheets actually went with the science kits. Mm -hmm. So it, wa it was actually a lab experiment. It was right. just, you know, I mean, it was purposeful, but it was a worksheet. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, then you can qualify the value of it. But sure. It definitely Right, for an example, worksheets. one class, a student was drawing a, a picture of, of his family, but it was a worksheet. It wasn't like, here's a piece of paper, draw right. a picture of your family. And then one of the concerns we always had is, are the worksheets board-approved materials? Right. And the one things that we did see, they were part of the science kits. Mm -hmm. We saw board-approved, and we saw um, the better worksheets, also. actually, was the teacher-created one. Mm -hmm. It was it was appropriate. Mm -hmm. It was, mm -hmm. was teacher-created. But they were working with voc um, a graphic organizer and filling in information concerning vocabulary. Okay, thank you for allowing us to visit today, Absolutely. and we'll be happy to share the data with you. Um, Mr. Wills will download the information and share with you, and we'll be back to visit in the near future. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely.